Good evening, everybody. My name is Matt Wadelski. I am a, a civil engineer here at the city of Encinitas, and I'm the project manager for the Santa Fe Drive Corridor Improvement Project. And we are here tonight having our citizen participation plan meeting. Certainly are very happy that uh, everybody can join us and uh, attend this way. We understand back before we had our pandemic, we would meet in person. And obviously now this is what we have to do. So we are obviously using our technology. We are gonna try to present everything we have with our project for you right now. And then we're gonna mainly have a question and answer session after we get done with our quick presentation. But again, I wanna introduce myself. My name is Matt Wadelski, senior civil engineer, and I'm the project manager. And I'll go with my team, Eric, Bethany, Tom, Mike, and Merrill. Eric, go ahead, please introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Eric Torreson with TetraTech. I am the project manager for the design team, uh, managing the oversight for the project and overseeing the project and working with the city on this. Um, I'll go ahead and let the uh, rest of the team uh, introduce themselves. Hi, good evening. My name is Bethany Bizak with KTUNA. Mike? Yeah, Mike Singleton with KTUNA. Hi, I'm Tom Bertulis with KTUNA. And Merrill Taylor with Craftwater. I'm working on the stormwater features of the project. Okay, thank you. All right, um, let's get moving on our next slide. What we have for our project, this is a bicycle and pedestrian corridor improvement project along Santa Fe Drive. And the limits we're talking about are basically going from Interstate 5 all, all the way east to about El Camino Real. So that's our segment. As you can see from my slide, when you see these letters A, B, C, D, E, that basically is what segment we're talking about. So we can kind of, if we're talking about segment C, this is how we're talking about what area of the corridor we're talking about. But it's a 1.25 mile corridor project for bicycle and pedestrian improvements separated. And then we kind of have our separation between our red and blue colors, as you can see on the screen, hopefully. The Eastern phase or the red phase as we call it, is supported by an ATP grant from the state. So we're happy about that. And then the Western phase or the blue color you have on your, on your, sheet, on your screen is supported by an HSIP grant. So we have multiple grants that are helping support this project. There's some city funding in here as well. And there's different sections along this corridor that we wanna do. And so that is what the basic design and the length of the project is. The goals we had is there's 14 intersections along the corridor, 1.25 miles, as I said, and there's four of them that are signalized right now, and we need to do some improvements. The thing that's tricky, as most of you know, because you live and you drive and walk along this corridor, the right-of-way widths vary from 60 to 138 feet, so that's why we don't have a lot of consistency along the corridor, and that's why we're doing the project. One thing, to make a consistent corridor, so it's consistent lane widths and, and lengths all along the corridor for improving the road. Right now, there are 21 driveways on the north and 23 on the south side. So it's about half and half for a total of 44 that do need to be adjusted and it will be part of the project. There's seven crosswalks, as you can see. And probably most of you know, there were recent upgrades to the Interstate 5 intersection at Santa Fe Drive. So we're certainly trying to tie into that and make this an entire corridor experience that's very good. And right now, the last note, this limited current active transportation that's what is there now. And that's one of the things we're trying to fix with our project going forward. So the considerations, the project has been around the city for a few years. It started off as three separate projects, just to let you all know. And we combined it all into one project for one corridor because we wanted to try have a vision of the entire 1.25 miles, not just small little segments that we could do. Um, again, we also had two grants that were separate and we combined everything into one project. So this is just really helping us here make one consistent project going along. And right now um, we have completed, like we said, our 30% design and we have completed our CEQA documentation and submitted that for Caltrans for approval. And now we're doing community outreach, ready to get ready to get into deep into our design. The big things we wanted were separated bikeways where possible along the corridor. And then a bus stop across from San Diego High School was a big criteria that came in when we were bringing this project up to city council. We have intersections we want to improve because the current condition of them, 
really aren't conducive to having bicycle and pedestrian facilities come in there. So as you see in our presentation, you'll see the proposed intersections for two of them, which we want to do for the project. And we hope you'll uh, enjoy what it is. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And again, since this is a, it's basically a priority development project because we are disturbing impervious area and we are adding more than 5,000 square feet, we do have to comply with a Green Street project in order to be in compliance with state stormwater requirements. So you'll see features like detention areas, areas where water can drain and things like that along the project. And, and a big thing we really wanted to do is we certainly wanted to make sure that the high school and other schools along the corridor had buy-in on this and had seen this and were, were happy with what we could do. Because if we can get a bicycle and pedestrian corridor, maybe we can get kids biking and walking to school, wondering if they can get back into the class, which also we're always hoping for as well. So again, what we've done so far is back in May of last year, we got the contract for uh, Tetra Tech to begin the design. We've done the 30% design, we've done our surveying, we've done our layouts, we've started our initial environmental submittals. And right now, again, we have a 30% planned and we have completed our, some of our CEQA and NEPA determinations and doing our community outreach now. And our plan is to hopefully be finished with design by August, September of this year. And then we're looking to go out for construction, obviously when the opportunity comes up. That is our project timeline right now. All right, I will turn it now over to Eric, the project manager for Tetra Tech. Uh, actually, uh, my- oh, I'm sorry, to Mike, I apologize. Yes, no problem. <laughs> Mike Singleton with KTNA. So we started um, this project for the first few months looking at alternatives on how we could add the bike and ped facilities as best as possible in the quarter with the least amount of impact on adjacent properties as well as the desire not to have to acquire any right away as part of the project. We did find a variety of solutions that would allow us to work within the existing right of way and for that matter, actually even avoid some of the conflicts and uh, that exist up and down the corner where encroachments have occurred. So we've taken a very conservative role on this to not create any issues associated uh, with the private property owners along the edge. Uh, the diagrams that you're seeing on the screen right now are concepts of what could happen in, in this particular case, segment A, or the very first segment of the quarter, which is about the tightest point that we actually have. Uh, so we did look at a multi-use path, which is basically like what the coastal, um, coastal trail is that runs through a portion of Encinitas where bike and ped, uh, peds can be on the same facility at the same time. Uh, the north half of this segment has already been reconfigured um, and has this type of configuration that you're seeing on the north or uh, on the right hand side of that first diagram. The second type of facility we looked at is a buffer bike lane where it's actually shared space in the roadway that's between curbs. And in this case, it's called the buffered bike lane because it has an additional stripe uh, that keeps a little bit more offset from vehicles to where the bikes are at. Then the um, third and fourth alternative we looked at are actually a combination of what are called cycle tracks. Sometimes they're now called protected bike facilities. And in this case, the difference between the two sides you're seeing there is in one case, it's a one way on each side of the street. And in the other case, they're actually on the cycle tracker combined together. And this differs from the multi-use path that you see up above in the sense that pedestrians are not uh, allowed on a cycle track, whereas on the multi-use path they are. So there's a separate facility that's listed down below. So through all of our deliberations, all of our surveys, all of our professional input on this, um, the team has, and the city, and based on that public input, selected the one-way protected bike facility. So it's one direction on each side of the road. They're separated by a raised median, and that median itself, uh, it's a curb basically, will end up uh, serving as some of the stormwater runoff as well. If you'd like to switch on the next slide. In this case, the project has to look at uh, handling water quality and increased water runoff that may occur in the area. This table kind of shows two different ways of doing that. One is where we actually collect the water and transport to an area where it can be uh, cleaned through some type of a medium or filter system. And that's what type one, two, and three are showing up above. In areas where it's very, very tight for us to work with, that's the way that uh, the water will be picked up and moved to another location for its final cleaning through a bioswale or some type of a filter. Types four, five, six, and seven are um, cleaning the water along the way exactly where they, they are first brought over to the actual curb area. So as you can see on one of those photos, it's usually like a bioswale that has some vegetation 
and rock material in it, as well as the soil medium. So when the water drains through that and is picked up by a subsurface pipe, it's considered to be a higher water quality uh, stand. So this is something required on the project, but even though there's gonna be consistency on the um, class four one-way cycle tracks and sidewalks up and down the corridor, there will be a, a high degree of variability between how the stormwater runoff is go going to be done on any particular segment. Okay, next slide. And this is just kind of an idea that um, in, in a lot of cases, these protected facilities need to have some type of a raised uh, median or curb in order to define the space. Now, of course, along the corridor, this will be broken in quite a number of areas wherever there's a driveway. Um, but the protection comes from that separation. So when we're in a very tight area, it would look like something on the left. When we have a larger area that we use for stormwater runoff, you can see how the water will run into this channel and we'll have the ability to have plant material and uh, rock mulches as well as some street trees in those areas. So again, this will vary up and down the corridor to some extent, um, but we're trying to make everything work we can and some places it's gonna be much tighter to fit things than other places. So next slide. One other feature by the high school is a mid block crossing. In this case, we'll actually be using standard light signals or it's kind of like a half signal because it's, it's really a traffic signal. There's not vehicles coming in from the sides. So this would be a pedestrian actuated and it also allows bikes to come from the two different sides of the cycle track to get across. Um, the bulb outs will be there to help lower the amount of um, travel time that a pedestrian or bike would need to cross that particular street. And it's also a high visibility crosswalk. So between those three um, elements of a high visibility crosswalk, the bulb outs and the traffic signals, this should be a very safe crossing uh, for people to use in the future, including students going to and from the schools in the area. All right, uh, next slide. With this, I'm gonna turn it over to um, Tom Bertellis who will talk to us about how the intersections will be handled as well as the individual segments, uh, segments themselves and the improvements proposed on each segment. Go ahead, Tom. Thank you, Mike, uh, appreciate that. So what we're looking at for the two intersections in front of SDA, the high school, is a Dutch intersection, uh, commonly known as a protected intersection. Um, these have been built in the United States since 2015. So there's several dozen of them across the, from the West Coast to the East Coast. The first one was built in California and it's, they're really well done uh, for, for kids in particular um, in order to attract new users, beginners, and the like. This kind of tells you what they look like. You have these little curb refuge islands that give protection for the cyclists. Um, they mitigate that right turn by slowing down the cyclists, uh, sorry, slowing down the, the turning traffic um, and putting, putting the, the conflict place in one, uh, one place. So next slide, please. Uh, we're putting one roundabout. The plan is to put one roundabout on the corridor right at Crest. Um, as many people know, there's a uh, sight distance issues there and we'd like to slow down the speeds. Um, we are using the uh, a separated bike lane at the roundabout, which is considered best practice. Now, I'm sure lots of people are gonna be curious if they can stay in the roundabout on their bike. And the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, for this whole corridor, if you are a cyclist that likes to stay in the street, you're welcome to stay in the street. If you are what's known as the 8 to 80 crowd, um, you're welcome to stay in the separated bike lane. Similar to uh, 101 in, uh, in Cardiff, you, can, you, you have your choice of facilities. Uh, next slide, please. So this is just some of the driveways that we've seen here that proved to be a, a, can be a challenge for, for the design team. Um, it, it's not always apparent when you look at the plan view of where the challenges are. This one might be uh, the biggest challenge. This driveway happens to be just east of Windsor on Santa Fe. And the issue is that there's, it's a relatively steep driveway and we're trying to widen the road in order to provide walking and biking facilities. Uh, on the north side of the street, we have a steep slope. On the south side of the street, we're trying to tie into this driveway. And if we try to go wider, it would make it even steeper. So we actually are keeping the line at the driveway and then going to the north. And uh, we're gonna build a retaining wall. But that just sort of gives you an idea of some of the challenges we have on this project. Next slide. 
So segment A, Mike already talked about this. Uh, it's, it's along with segment uh, E and F towards the end. It's one of the tightest segments. The segments B, C, and D actually have um, plenty of space. But like Mike mentioned already, we considered a two-way versus a one-way, partly because the two-way in the south side might, might be easier to go you know, towards I-5 and then under I-5. You wouldn't have to deal with um, freeway on-ramp traffic, just off-ramp traffic, which is a little easier to deal with. Ultimately, we went with this one way, and you can see right there up in the middle, uh, race speed tables and crosswalks and bulb outs. These are considered uh, best practice for mitigation of crashes and low speed and safety, frankly, for all users, for people walking, biking, driving, everybody. Uh, just to be clear, this is a project to improve safety for, for every road user. And that's, that's the idea behind this. You can see how it's kind of shown where it says uh, two-way walkway, AKA sidewalk, and one-way uh, one protected bike facility with raised medians. Um, the term, by the way, the FHWA is now using the term separated bike lane and the Caltrans is using the term separated bikeway. So there's a little nuance in the terms that are used in different agencies across the country. But you can see on the right where the um, protected intersection is located. And in the previous meeting, we did get some feedback. We wanted the people wanted a map to orientate themselves. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, that is a map that, you, that will be there for the entire PowerPoint presentation. On the bottom left, you can see a little bit of I-5. And then on the right, at the very end, you can see El Camino. So that's the, the map. And then those are the sections from A to F that we're going to be going through in this PowerPoint presentation today. Next slide. So segment B, uh, like I said before, you know, B, C, D, uh, quite a bit more space. We are actually adding parking. Um, I always like to say that, that no parking was injured or killed in the making of this project. We are actually adding parking here. Um, you can see in the bottom that uh, a lot of the, what was previously parallel parking we're making to head out angled parking. Um, and the same thing, you'll notice one way protected bike facilities to the entire length of the corridor. This is no exception. The same thing with the race crossings on the driveways. This is also uh, no exception. So continue on next slide. Hey Tom, could you go back one slide though? Um, could you point out the uh, drop-off zone for the high school? <laughs> right, so one big benefit of this project is a drop-off zone for the high school at SDA. So in the upper left-hand corner of, your, of the screen, you'll be able to see uh, the drop-off zone. You see those little white cars. Yeah, there's, thank you for that, Matt. Matt's showing with the cursor where they'll be. So as you're coming down, you wanna drop off your student, you pull off to the right, like Matt's showing, and you pull back off to the left. Um, this is, yeah, when, I, when I designed this, I actually walked the entire corridor and right in the upper left-hand corner was a bit tricky because I don't know if you guys know that, but there's, Various, yeah, just to the left there, Matt, if you put your little cursor farther to the left where that tree is, yeah, right there, that bulb out area, there's actually some utilities there, um, little utility boxes sticking out, three or four, so I took it to take measure and measured it to make sure that a protective facility could fit in there without having to relocate the utilities, um, and we were able to get it to work, so that was, uh, that was a good thing. And another aspect of that particular drop off, you'll notice it's got a slip lane or the ability for a car to pass those that are dropping off at the curb. So they can pull out into that. There's also a raised curb, uh, preventing them from just entering back into the lane of travel. Uh, it controls them at one particular point. So you actually do have one elementary school in town that has something similar to this. And uh, Matt was responsible for that. And so we've uh, copied that idea in this location. Good point, thank you, Mike. So we can go to the next slide. So here you see on the left, the mid-block pedestrian bike crossing. Um, we did go with best practice for that. Mike already mentioned it at the beginning of the presentation, um, but there was a slide on it before. But I'll just reiterate that we are going with the PET signal, uh, which is what we chose is safer than a rectangular rapid flashing beacon or a pedestrian hybrid beacon. Um, and it does allow both pedestrians and cyclists to cross. And you will notice that the pedestrians do have the right of way. The cyclists have to yield to the pedestrians as they're crossing. Um, and the same thing here, we have head on angle parking, raised crossings at the driveways and one way protected <coughs> bike lanes on both sides. 
Now, one thing you might notice is that currently in the bottom right, um, Matt, can you go to the bottom right? <clears throat> yeah. For, for those of you who know the area, which I assume most of you, <coughs> currently there's um, reverse angled parking there. Um, it is in the, in the public right of way, I should mention. But we're going to be changing the reverse angle parking to head out angle parking, just so it's consistent with all the other parking on the, on the corridor. And there's another uh, protected intersection on the right. So those are the two protected intersections that we'll be uh, proposing for this. Uh, okay, ne <clears throat> next slide. So um, the, uh, um, this is uh, the same thing. This is segment C, uh, quite a bit more space here with the exception of the very beginning, which is a little bit tight. So the driveway, the very first driveway in the lower left, that's the driveway that I showed the two pictures of earlier. That's the one where it's relatively steep and we actually had to move a little bit to the north in order to tie everything in. Um, and we'll be building a retaining wall on the north side of the street there. Man, if you wanna put your little cursor there. <clears throat> um, that's a little bit of a tight squeeze in there, but um, we're able to get it to work. Um, same thing, we've got one-way protected bikeways, raised crossings, uh, bioswales. Uh, Mike talked quite a bit about the planters and the bioswales, so that was um, uh, interesting. So uh, next slide, please. So um, this is uh, segment D, also has quite a bit of space, bioswales and street trees. Protected bike facilities, you can see them here in raised crossings. Um, this is a, a pretty standard section. We didn't really have to squeeze anything here. We actually had more road space than we needed, so everything will be nice, nice and wide. Um, next slide. You can see, I kind of went over it quickly, but Belure on the left, in fact, it's kind of hidden. Let's go back one slide. So Belure on the right, there is an existing RRFB, uh, Rapid Rectangular Flashing Beacon on that crosswalk to the right. Yeah, that crosswalk that crosses Santa Fe, on the right, yeah, that one. There's an existing RRFB there, which is new enough that it's not yet in Street View or Google Earth. You actually have to go out there to see it. There are plans to put a traffic signal there. We are not part of that project, so you don't, you don't have to ask us any questions about it. Um, but uh, apparently another group is gonna put a traffic signal there um, and we're just gonna, uh, tie to that in any way we can. Um, we'll be next. coordinating with that. So we'll make sure we get it. It will be coordinated with the traffic signal at Lake. So if you go one slide further, there's an existing traffic signal at Lake and the one at Belure, those two are gonna be coordinated. So it's gonna have dual benefits of people coming in and out of Belure. Right now during peak hours, it's difficult to come out of Belure, but a traffic signal will give uh, motorists the ability to come out but at the same time, when you coordinate those two, there won't be any um, issues because you have this green band where when you hit one green, you'll hit the other green. So those traffic engineers, they just know so much. Um, so that's the idea. So if you look at this segment, it's the same thing. You've got one-way protected bike facility, bias swells, raised crossings. Um, uh, lake was tricky. You know, At one point, we considered a roundabout at Lake, but there just wasn't enough right of way there, it's just too tight of, a, of an intersection. So we're not, we're, we just left the, um, the traffic signal there. So now we're getting into, so next slide. Uh, actually, before you move on, maybe make sure you point out that that's a new walkway on the, on the north side. There's not one that exists. So pedestrian uh, facilities being added on that north side through this segment. That's a good point, Mike, thank you for that. So on the north side, we're having new pedestrian facilities on the new sidewalk right there. Um, on the south side, there's an existing sidewalk. So we're uh, improving this facility for, for all users for walking and biking and driving and uh, skateboarding and everybody. Next slide. So here we're getting into one of the tightest sections. Uh, e, F, and A are definitely the tightest sections. And basically on the left side of the si slide, you can see Wotan. From Lake to Wotan, that little section is possibly our tightest section. You can see on the bottom how it diverts a little bit down. 
we basically deflected the roadway and the cycle track and everything a little bit to the south in order to make everything fit. And we were able to get everything to fit. Um, and uh, so that's Wotan. Um, going on to Crest, so we're designing this uh, roundabout. Um, the, so far, the feedback has been positive, what we received there. And uh, um, it should have high, the roundabouts in general have about th a third more capacity of traffic signals. So we don't see any issues with traffic capacity in terms of more congestion leading to route running in the neighborhoods. So that's a, that's a good thing. And we see a lot of safety benefits from the roundabout. And like I said, if you're uh, if you prefer to, to take the lane, you're also welcome just to take the lane and to take the run pop. Next slide. So here we're getting to the second and last slide, segment F. This was definitely a very tight section. Uh, for those that know this, there's a bit of a drop off on both the north and south sides of the street, right at the beginning there on the west end. Um, so ultimately, um, rather than taking uh, you know, the front yard or, you know, landscaping or something from some of the residents. We decided to make the street a little more, more narrow. We didn't put a walkway on the north side, only on the south side. We thought about back and forth what would be better, but we figured it made more sense to have a walkway on the south side, especially since cyclists coming up the hill on the north side would, would go a lot slower, and anyone walking would just share the space with the cyclists on the north side. Um, on the south side, they would probably be going a lot faster, so we separated the facility, uh, the walking and the biking facilities on the south side. Um, next slide. So this is the last slide, the same thing. We were able to save everything. Uh, you guys might know that on the north side there, there's a big landscaping business and they've got landscaping in front of their place and they've got some you know, a drainage ditch. We're not touching any of that. We went out and measured it and we were able to not harm any of their facilities. You know, we, we really tried to not harm any of the facilities that the, the residents have on the street. Um, we were able to just move everything a little bit to the south and fit everything in. And there's uh, El Camino Real on the right side. So this is my last slide. I'm going to hand it back to Matt now. Go ahead, Matt. Okay, thank you very much. Tom, Tom, real quick on that last stretch there, um, add, adding a sidewalk on the north also would take out a couple trees too. So that was one of the things that kind of played into that decision also. So we didn't want to really have to take out any trees that we didn't need to. So Thank you. That's a really good point, Eric. Thank you for that on point. And one other point, Tom, was that um, there are a number of power lines along the corridor on the north side. Um, and there is no um, way that this project or any other um, current funding source can underground those utilities. So not only did we miss a lot of the vegetation and some fences that were actually in the corridor along some of those residents, but we also managed to miss the utility lines to save substantial amount of money that would normally be required to underground all of those. Now, there may still eventually be an undergrounding project in the future, but this project um, can't integrate that into this budget. Okay. All right. Well, this was uh, our presentation that we had for you. And so just wanted to say the one thing I wanted to make sure hopefully everybody saw. And if you didn't, I wanted to point out is I know some of the comments initially when we were starting with outreach on this, because we had some focus groups is we don't want you to take away any lanes or any turn lanes. And none of that happened. This is not a road diet. We are keeping if there was an existing turn lane, we kept the turn lane. If it was straight through, we kept everything. All we're doing is we're adding bike lanes and, and, the, and the sidewalks on the edges with the green street feature. So I just want to make sure everybody is, is, is clear on that because I know a lot of times when, when bicycle and pedestrian projects come in, the conception is that that means travel lanes are going away and we are not doing that on this project. So I just want to make sure, okay, we will stop our presentation and now we will take questions from all of you out there that would like to have questions. And uh, let me stop sharing my screen. So um, do you guys think I should just dive in? Or does someone else want to dive in? Should I dive in to the uh, written questions? Is that, is that okay? Matt yeah, go ahead, Tom. Eric and Mike and everybody. Um, so 
I'll, I'll, uh, I'll start at the top. Um, anonymous attendee, that's interesting that someone came in anonymous. Uh, considering separated bikeways are responsible for many of the Cardiff cycle trap accidents, why would the city double down on danger and install them in Santa Fe or anywhere else in the city? Um, so this is, I actually recommend we have a, a, a separate, like a long discussion about this. <laughs> um, this, this is, this is some, a question that's come up quite a bit uh, in my career and I'm sure on everyone else's career. I, I remember I started designing bike lanes in the 90s and um, we had the same question coming up, but why are you designing bike lanes? They're too dangerous. Um, the 1999 Astro um, Bike Design Guide had nine reasons not to design uh, what were called side paths at the time. Um, they later became called cycle tracks and then protected bike lanes and then separated bike lanes. So this is a, you know, an ongoing discussion. Um, the, right now there's a Facebook group um, called, you know, save our, you know, Encinitas, bring safety to our, to 101, something along those lines, has 980 uh, people in it. So there's a lot of people in it. Um, I don't know how many of those people all have the same, exactly the same perspective. It, I did notice some disagreements within, I, I, I look at it almost every day. So I have a pretty good sense of what people are saying. Um, so yeah, the, the, <laughs> here's, a, here's a quick answer. The, the, the bikeways are not responsible for the cycle trap. There was, I, you know, I've, I've biked in that many times since it first opened. When it first opened, they didn't uh, paint the little uh, wedges. Uh, people were hitting them because they couldn't see them. So initially, so during construction and until they painted them, uh, there were some people that hit them. Um, Tom? Yes? I, I believe the, the, the specific question is, um, are separated bike lanes, are they safe? So the answer is they are safe. There have been uh, numerous studies that have come out um, showing that they are safe. Uh, um, we could have a, a longer discussion about them. There are... Definitely people that ride uh, in, in like road, road cyclists that prefer to go 20 to 25 miles an hour, that prefer not to ride in separated bike lanes for, for good reason. Uh, and we're trying to design for as, as many types of users as possible. Um, I've dealt with this on a lot of other projects that I've worked on. And we often have a lot of people with very strong opinions on both sides of the issue. Ultimately, we're not gonna make everybody happy. And um, we, we, we just have a lot of experience with these, uh, but we can, we can discuss this more, more later on. But these, these, are, these are tried and true um, since they entered the NACTO um, guidelines in 2011. So for the last 10 years, they've been going in. There's somewhere about 500 and 600, between 500 and 600 separated bike lanes now in the nation. Um, Tom, real quick, just to kind of summarize, I think that what we're saying is, is that what we're providing here is if, if, if you're, if you're going down there with your kids, they're going to be safe enough and separated. And if you're, I think you mentioned earlier too, in the presentation that if you're a professional bike rider and you want to go 20 miles an hour, 25, you can also ride in the street and be happy and fine and go along with the flow of traffic also. Right. That's correct. Okay, good. Um, Hey Matt, uh, the other thing that came up, I think some people wanted to be able to ask a question via voice. Uh, was that supposed to be utilized by the hand participants? Somebody raised their hand to ask a question. Um, I think in our conversation, somebody was supposed to be controlling the question and answer and the voice prompt for people to ask a question. How is that supposed to happen here? So our intent is to have everyone type in their answers or their questions into the, the Q&A box at the bottom. That way we have a good record of exactly what the question is. We make sure we stay on topic. Okay. So that was somebody's question. So we just answered that question too. Good. Okay, so thank you for that. I'll go on to the next one. What are the advantages of head out angle parking for Santa Fe? There's a, a lot of advantages for head out angle parking. They, um, you can, when you're pulling out, you make eye contact with a motorist in the street. So there, there's a lot of safety issues, especially with cyclists. Any cyclists that do cho choose, chose to ride in the street, uh, if you're pulling out, you'll be able to see them. When you open your, door and you have kids in the back seat, the door opens in such a way that kids run to the back instead of to the front. If you're unloading or loading from your trunk, you'll be able to unload and unload to the, um, 
the sidewalk and not to the street. And there are, you know, I've designed a lot of these and a lot of community members say that they're nervous about them um, with good reason. I always like to say they're the first half of a parallel parking loop. So if you can parallel park, you can get into angled parking. There is a little bit of a learning curve, but ultimately there are much better designs. So they have a lot of advantages. Um, um, next, uh, in your experience, mm -hmm. how long is the time frame for, for somebody to get used, like a community to get used to like actually utilizing them? Like, you know, I mean, when they first come, you know, the first week, not that many people use them, but then maybe what's the time frame well, for people? The, you, you know, so like when I put them in, in, um, in my, uh, in, in the Boston area with, you know, pretty quickly they were being utilized. It just, what happens is a few, several days, maybe one to two weeks, there's a little discomfort in terms of going in and back and forward. And um, it's, it's, it, it's more discomfort the first few times that you try it, but you, the utilization is pretty high right from day one. Um, and you just sort of get used to it and, and then you're fine. Good. And the lanes, the uh, actually parking lanes are a little bit wider than if you were heading in to angled parking. Uh, so that's a little bit of an advantage. And certainly there's a trend for a lot of vehicles to have either a driver assist or certainly good backup cameras and alignment uh, tools. All those things help a driver get into that spot. But for the most part, like anything else, you just have to try it for a while. You'll get used to it. It's not that much different than parallel parking. Thank you for that. Um, next question. So next question is also about separated bike facilities, which I think I addressed. Um, uh, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, I'll, I'll, if that's okay, should we just go to the next one after that? That's fine, move on, yep. Um, with the parking being the direction shown, uh, yes, it will. Um, Next question, a lot of outreach about reverse angle parking, but people are intimidated. Absolutely. I, I sort of alluded to that, that people are a little intimidated by it. Um, how many trees will be removed? I, did we, does someone have an answer to the tree removal? We had very, uh, you know, one or two trees along the corridor is about the extent of it. There's some birds of paradise that, um, giant bird of paradise that are on the downhill stretch on the south side of Crest going down the hill that we, by tightening it up, we've pretty much missed most all of those. There's a larger pine tree that uh, is along the corridor that's um, set up on retaining walls right now. We're hoping that we do not have to change that, but until we get into a little bit more a subsequent design and engineering, we won't know that one for sure. But for the most part, it's definitely under 10 trees that would be affected in the corridor, but quite a, more, quite a larger number being added back in. Yeah. So thank you for that. Um, in section FE, the south side, where does the protection end at the approach to the intersection of El Camino Real? We're planning on doing protection all the way to the intersection uh, on the south side of the street for the eastbound uh, bike lane. It's going to be raised. You can see that it's going to be right next to the, the, the sidewalk. Um, on the north side of the street for the westbound cycle track, because there's that turn lane, you know, when you turn around the corner, you have that lane. Um, we'll probably do, we're not, we haven't 100% agreed on, on how it's gonna be, but we're probably gonna do flex posts there. Um, if that's, uh, but this, these are details we can, we can work out the exact details later after we get more community input. So feel free to give us input on, on what you would prefer. Um, will the cycle track be actually separated as shown or we end up with curves and plastic? Or metal poles, <laughs> so we, we we generally don't do metal poles um, for uh, for cycle tracks if 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 they pose to be a danger to, to motorists. Um, but we um, we it, it will depend. It'll likely be a mix of types of separation. We're going to do as as much as possible. Going to raise it six inches off the ground. Um, where we don't raise it six inches off the ground we will use some sort of um, separation. And if you go to the People for Bikes website, they have a list of types of separation. I think they have 101 ways to separate a bike lane. Um, the the, the you know, flex posts are one of the options. 
we're happy to get feedback from the community on the preferences for types of separation. So uh, feel free to you know, look at that matrix from people for bikes um, or give us feedback on what would be the preferred types of separation because we haven't fully um, determined exactly what it would be. But as much as possible, we'll raise it six inches off the ground. Right, but for clarity purposes, it's mainly being protected by a raised uh, curb line, and that raised curb line is typically two feet. Sometimes it's a parkway strip for five feet in width. So this is not like the intermittent uh, asphalt uh, curbs that you see on, on Coast Highway. This is more of a continuous one with a gap and a wider space in it. And we need that also not just for a safer separation, but we also need it for clean water runoff as well. All right. Thank you for that, Mike. Um, so uh, I like your new design. It helps a lot. I see you put a lot of thought and consideration. However, I did not see any driveway or streets for the proposed 57 home development across from FCA. This development may generate significant traffic at commute time, which may overlap with SDA open time. How will you accommodate the additional traffic? This, you know, I've, I've seen emails, there's been a lot of emails with Matt and Mike and Eric that we've been uh, discussing the development across from SDA. Um, and Mike, your last email, you had mentioned that we might even be able to use that pedestrian signal to allow traffic to come out of that development, right? Yeah, that, um, that has to be studied further from a traffic safety standpoint and flow, but uh, correct. signal in there, there's a possibility to find a solution from that as well. But right now, this topic has been brought up more recently, and after we um, get past, uh, or once we have moved past the 30% design and have the authority to keep moving forward on the project, then we'll be looking at that as well as solutions in that area. Yeah, I think our project is focusing on the pedestrian and, and bike traffic along Santa Fe and the safe movement of that. And so it's flexible and we can work with the city and, and as we get through design, we'll work as required with the city on what needs to be done as they work their traffic signals and, and everything through that. So that's how we go about that. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. So the next question is about the Santa Fe bike ped crossings. So we do show both bike and ped crossings across Santa Fe uh, in the plans. Um, Matt, you can even show, we go back to the slide if you want and go to Santa Fe. Um, right. Yeah, yeah there's, there's one example where it shows by, both bike and ped crossing. And if you go back to the beginning where you showed the, or the, the, you know, the larger image, if you go Very now, main separated. Yeah, one? right there. No, go up forward one. Oh, there so you see both pedestrian and bike crossings across Santa Fe, and in fact, across all four. Uh, so yes, the, the roundabout will have all four. Um, uh, the timeline for each section by priority. I might have to pass this one off to Eric or somebody. Do you know the timeline for each section by priority? Uh, well, for, for this, um, like we said, right now, we're, we're going to finalize the design here, hopefully by, we said, August, September. And then obviously we're going to you know, request and see we got to get the construction funding. It, it, we can't answer it right now. Our goal would be to build everything once we can, but we have to see what comes out from all of, of the meetings above and from city council. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Um, so next one, um, Travis Newhouse, I'm really glad to see raised bikeways at all driveways. That's an important safety feature for the protected bikeways to help avoid right hooks and left hooks. Absolutely, that is what was on our mind. Um, safety is of utmost importance to this project. Uh, how the Dutch have mitigated their right hooks is to have raised crossings at the driveways um, and at these uh, inter minor intersections. And that's what we intend to do as well. Uh, so that's, uh, that's one of my favorite parts of this project actually. Um, so uh, let's see, let's go up one. Okay, so the next three I, um, uh, the next three I might pass, says, will this slide presentation be available? What are the design costs? What are the construction costs? I might add, uh, pass this off to Matt okay. or to someone. Um, <clears throat> Matt, we're gonna post the presentation online, correct? Yes, we can. The, uh, yeah. If everybody can see on, on the website here for more information, right on the city 
website, uh, when you go to public notices for development services, you can get to Santa Fe and we will have, that's where we have the meeting notice. We'll have the, the PowerPoint, the plans, the 30% plans are there as well. So yes. And then, and then the construction costs, we're still working through some of those. We have some preliminary design that we went through. Uh, we're still refining some of the items, uh, looking for cost savings. Um, we had some preliminary costs that we went through. Um, and as we, as we design and pick things, um, we're refining the cost and also bringing down some of the contingency costs. Uh, when we start off with 30%, we kind of um, are conservative on the cost because we don't we want to set aside enough budget and not <clears throat> miss anything. So uh, we're still working on finalizing up those numbers right now so, and working with the city on all those items. So, um, um, so uh, let's see. So, so thank you for that uh, response. Um, let's see, let's go back up. So did you, so we got construction costs and did you mention construction costs? Yeah. Okay. So we'll, we got, we'll get more detail on the next 60% uh, design once we can uh, really work into, uh, you know, retain, actual retaining wall heights and, and where exactly, you know, where we're gonna actually have a curb curbs and, and, and lifts and, and landscaping and all the other fun details uh, in more precise numbers, so. All right, so the, the question about driveway adjustments, oh, sorry, I'll just go above that. Um, in contrast to the complaint about separated cycle track, I like the cycle track, I wanna wanna hope you keep them on Santa Fe. Uh, thank you for that. I, we definitely do want uh, people, if you like the cycle tracks on one one please let us know we anticipate uh, plenty of people on both sides of this. Uh, this also says, uh, confirm the roundabout crest will include bike pay crossing. Uh, we, we talked about that one. What do you mean by driveway adjustments for homeowners along Santa Fe? So um, Eric might have more insight into that just because Eric, I think your team looked a lot more at the driveways on Santa Fe, correct? Correct, correct. And uh, as you can see with the pictures that uh, were shown in the presentation, there are some driveways. Um, I believe, Matt, if you go back to those two pictures you show, um, one way around is when we were looking at the project, we looked at shifting, for instance, on this one, we know that some of, we, we actually talked to this gentleman out there uh, in the site. You can see um, in the site, he has like a little drainage in, inlet because he has water coming down. So we're gonna try to help adjust these, make sure that we do not, do not increase any in impacts onto his property. But part of that is when we're fitting in the bikeway alignments in our preliminary analysis, we looked at our impacts. And so we were able to kind of shift within this existing right of way to kind of help give us a little bit extra space so that we can help reduce impacts on his. So that's adjustments there in, there in those areas. Um, and then as you look on the right side of that, you know, we have a steeper driveway there. So then we have to adjust, make some small adjustments there to help that out, to make it fit within and tie it into our roadway and bikeways. So we're gonna end up having to deal with ADA walking uh, requirements uh, of the sidewalk. And so those all have to tie into the driveways and make sure that everything works. So with that, there, there are some adjustments that are made to people's driveways and access and we work with that. We try to limit that and work within the existing right away as much as possible. Um, as we get into the 60%, we get into uh, more, more detail. Um, and I think there's a couple of properties um, that are unavoidable. And you know, some of these property owners probably already know their existing constraints. Um, and so we look forward to working with them and, and, and making things better for them uh, to the best of our ability. Our, our goal here is to provide safety for everyone, and that includes somebody backing out of their driveway. Thank you for thank you for that, Eric. Uh, next question from Christine Bush: How many feet will be needed into our property in the north side of the EE section between Lake and Wotan to accommodate the bike lane and pedestrian walkway? Uh, from my understanding, we're not doing any property takes at all. Um, Eric, I don't know if your team well, looked at that one uh, specifically. How many feet? Um, uh, yeah, I believe in EE, there's existing right away already. There might be some minor landscape. Further to the left between, yeah, Wotan, from Wotan to the west. So look. Yeah, left. so there might be some landscape mm -hmm. 
tax there. Yeah, there's some existing right away already, uh, but we might be pulling back some landscape there um, and, and to add the sidewalks and stuff there that we need. I believe in that area also there's some um, uh, power poles there that we might need to adjust. And so that requires a little bit of additional space. But as far as actual right of way take, um, there's uh, none required there as, as far as we understand right now. Um, of course, we were going to 90%. There might be a small one or two foot retaining wall at the edge of our sidewalk to kind of help with the grading. Uh, but those are the kind of little adjustments we make uh, to limit any type of takes or impacts on, on properties. But as you can see, the blue line there is actually the, the right of way that we currently have or the it's actually shifted a bit because the image has shifted a bit, I think, on this one in this area here. Uh, but uh, actually, no, the blue line is correct. It is correct. Uh, uh, yeah, it's on the south side. It, it threw me off is because we're not labeling the development, yes. uh, the, the yeah. Santa Fe 12, uh, 1205 Santa Fe development on the south side there. Yeah, so, that will change there where the sidewalk is shown beyond the right of way, but that's going to be dedicated from the property owner. Correct. So yeah, that's what threw me off. I'm like, wait, that's not right. But then it is. It's, it's quite the opposite dedicated. in terms of the concern on the question, because as you can see on this slide, where the right of way is and how far away we've actually stayed from it. So not only are we not taking uh, any property, we're trying to leave in buffers where there's certain obstacles or assets or resources or driveway problems as much as possible. So. Uh, really at this point, in, until we get into the uh, final design, 16, 90%, we currently don't see any right away takes necessary, but that could change if there's a particular technical issue in one area. Yeah, correct. Thank you, thank you for that. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be further discussions about uh, that, that property. Um, Next question from Kay McClave. Tom, the 101 design has called, caused multiple injuries and there are pending lawsuits around some of those. Ballers on Acadia Boulevard cause of fatal accidents. This is not a theoretical question. This is bad design. Um, uh, I would love to talk to this person further. So it's, it's actually not true <laughs> that Ballers on Acadia did not cause a fatal accidents. I'm very familiar with the 101. Uh, the mo a very recent post on the Facebook group says we've gone several months with no crashes. Um, so I'm I, you know, I've, I've designed these in six countries around the world, hundreds of, of um, communities for more than two decades. And I've run across the, the same issues with people that want to cycle quickly, um, uh, 20 to 25 miles an hour. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot to be said about uh, vehicular cycling. There's a lot of good, but at the same time, uh, <laughs> I, I'm not going to really comment too much on frivolous lawsuits. But on the Katie Boulevard at, at Moonstone Court, the reason why we're doing raised crossings at the driveways is to mitigate um, any conflicts. It, it was not caused by bollards. I can't stress that enough. Um, I, I've, I've seen this before and I'll, I'll, see, I'll see this again, but this is, this is something that a lot of smart people have been doing a lot of research on. But, uh, and, I, and I know this question is gonna come up again, but we can have further well, conversations Joe, on it. Joe would really like to yeah. this one as well. Yep. Sorry? I just wanted to pop in. I just wanted to pop in and say the, the 101 is a completely different animal from this project. We had very constrained right away on the 101. Um, this project has lots of right away and we're going to be able to have a lot of separation. We're not going to have gaps in the AC dike. So this is a, a tried and true method to enhance the safety of the corridor. Thank, thank you, Joe. And I, another thing I would point out with the 101 is a lot of pedestrians in the bikeway due to the constrained right of way that Joe mentioned, where here we have a separate facility for pedestrians. Uh, and on the 101, there just isn't the space for um, a wide separate facility for pedestrians. So like Joe said, a lot of differences between the two. Um, so let's see, next. The next question. one is, uh, is there an entryway and exit section B from the current Santa Fe Christian Church which was sold as being developed into 57 units. I am a resident on the Newark Road and I'm very concerned about our street safety if the entry and exit is put onto <clears throat> Maneuver Road, um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, instead of the current place on Santa Fe as used by the church attendees in the past. I can um, answer so, yeah, I was gonna say on, on that one, I know, um, 
I believe that's a, a city development question right yeah. now. Um, so this project, of course, is developed on the, this is the public works project working on the pedestrian and bike safety. Um, so as we develop this, we can put entrances and exits. We can modify the design as, as required and work with the city. So as the city sees fit, we can adjust this project as, as we can uh, to add and subtract driveways. So there's not really any constrictions on that, but uh, we'll be working with the city um, with that on that on that uh, on the project as they as they, as things are processed. So, Eric, and and if I may just jump in on this one, um, that is a private development that is moving forward and being permitted through our planning staff. Um, it is an iterative process, and the projects are subject to change. Um, we are still in review and nothing has been set. We understand that this is a concern of the community and we are working to evaluate this very concern. Um, we, we definitely appreciate the comment, um, but, but the, the development itself, there are no decisions have been made at this time. And, and whenever the decision is made, this, this project team will incorporate that into the design. Uh, thank you for your comments. Um, so next question, would be landscaping along walkways and bikeways in what type? Uh, yes, there'll be landscaping. Mike, do you want to mention what type of landscaping? Well, it, there's not landscaping along the entire corridor. Uh, a lot of conditions change. It's wherever we can have, um, if we can have at least two foot of a raised curb, we can have uh, rock mulch, and if it's going to be used for any stormwater runoff, it will have some plant material in it, but that has to be plant material that can handle both very dry conditions and very wet conditions at the same time. In any areas where there's going to be a four-foot parkway that we can get out of it, then we can have street trees in those locations. So on these plans that we've been going through on segments, you can see where there are trees being added and where there's not. There will not be a consistent set of street trees up and down the corridor. We're trying to fit them in wherever best we can. In terms of the type of trees, they will not be palm trees. However, um, they'll be, uh, whether they're evergreen or deciduous, that's a question. If they're, um, some people have requested native trees. There's only six native trees to Western San Diego County and all of them require a very large amount of space or they're very thick or they grow too low to be next to a walkway. So there's certainly drought tolerant trees that we can use or some uh, trees that are, in, uh, more indigenous to the area and low maintenance, but um, we, we've tried to find a, a, a native strip tree in the area and um, besides a um, Pacific Madrone or a strawberry tree, that's the only ones that would work in this situation. And again, their branch structures, unless you put in larger ones, are a little bit too low for next to a bike lane. But anyway, so that's kind of, I know it's not a straight answer. Yes, you'll get uh, landscaping everywhere, but you'll get landscaping where there's enough width and you'll get street trees where there's enough width and it can do double duty in this in the stormwater runoff basins. <laughs> Thank you, Mike, I appreciate that. Uh, next question, will bike lanes be multi-use in areas where no sidewalk is available? The answer is yes. Uh, next question, I have a question about Crest Drive Roundabout. How close to the crosswalk on the north side of Crest would be to the corner driveway? Also, how much of the northeast corner of Crest to be removed to accommodate the roundabout? So I haven't looked carefully at that. And Eric, you, your team's probably look more carefully than myself for um, how much into the those corner. Driveway, the yeah, because there's this existing uh, driveways on those corners there. Um, we are still looking at that, as you can see right there, yeah. So. Um, we're still working those out right now um, to make sure we get some good spacing for that to limit impacts um, on those items there. So th those are something that we're going to expand the review on um, as we get into 60% design further. Uh, but we understand, we, we know that there's impacts there um, to limit that. But, but as you can see on there, the right-of-way lines, we've actually made it work within the right-of-way. Uh, I think it's on the next slide, it's a little bit closer on one corner. So we're, we're fortunate in this area that there were some ri uh, wider right-of-ways in this area, not to require any acquisitions or condemnation. But there still may be some problems with, like um, Eric said, uh, of some of those driveways getting back to grade based on some changes that would need to be happening to make the right. roundabout work. <clears throat> The access to the properties have been 
will we'll have to be modified a bit. So adjustments will be made. All right. Uh, thank you for that. Um, next is a comment. City of Del Mar has experience with reverse angle. Ask them about learning curve. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, good information. Um, next comment. Just want to make you aware that Monterey Vista at SF Drive, um, the vault, lit, the utility vault in the sidewalk was recently damaged, reported to the street department at the COE. So thank you for that uh, bit of information. Um, the uh, next one is, I noticed there are some areas where planners are close to the driveways. Will provisions be taken to ensure enough sight lines for vehicles to see bikes and pads before they turn into the driveways? For example, in front of Scripps Hospital west of this project, there are several signs for the hospital that block motor's vision of the sidewalk and the bike lane, whether entering from the street or parking lot. So thank you for that, Travis. Um, excellent point. Yes, we'll definitely uh, do our best to maintain all sight lines you want to keep it as safe for walking and, and biking as possible. So uh, thank you for bringing that up. We're going to make a note of all these comments and, and, and um, keep them in as, as we move forward into the 100% design. Uh, isn't that head-on angle parking going to cause some huge traffic issues? These aren't big city parking people. Um, so, I mean, obviously we can go to Del Mar and, and ask about their experience, but um, I have not seen them cause huge traffic issues. I know that if you have head in or head out, um, it you know can take a little longer than if you just had off street parking. Um, at the same time, we've gotten comments from people that they want to see more parking. So the angle parking does give us more parking. We want a parking positive uh, facility. How far will sidewalk improvement extend north and south streets at intersections? I'm not sure I'm understanding this correctly, but I'm assuming you mean the curb extensions. Uh, so we're keeping the width of the street lanes the same, and we'll just bulb it out at the intersection. Um, I, um, think I, think, I think the question is how far are the sidewalks going up the side streets? So if you go up the yeah. side streets, that's what that question is asking. Got it, got it. So Jill, your little thing came up. Did you wanna, oh, sorry. I think she was her name on that. I, I think the I think the answer to that one is in some of the side streets, like you get into Wotan and, and some of these other areas, um, we can work with the city to limit some of that. Because I know sometimes some of these areas they may want to keep the rural feel to some of these side streets where they have limited sidewalks and and access as far as that goes to keep that feel. But we'll work with the city on that uh, and to see which areas they want to add sidewalk or reduce or keep it as the same. And so. We're, right now, we're really focusing actually on Santa Fe Drive um, for these improvements and, and the Santa Fe Drive and then the major intersections uh, that we're adding the actual uh, protected intersections on are the ones we're really focusing on. And as the other ones come up, we can take them as is as we get into the, the final 60% design. So. Thank you for that. Next one, how many trees will be added? Does, does uh, Mike or Eric, do you guys know how many trees will be added? You know, it's, it's really not safe to say the number of trees, the way that usually you work with trees, you, you have the intent to get a lot of trees in a lot of areas, but then you, based on site distance, utility conflicts and everything else, they tend to start disappearing on, on you. But at, between the 30 and the 60%, at the 60%, we'll have a really good idea of where they can actually go without any uh, constraints causing problems. <clears throat> uh, thank you. Next one, the reverse angle parking and SF drive cars, are they going back in? Sorry if I missed this topic. So they're not going back. The, the reverse angle parking is going to become head out angle parking just west of Bonita, um, just to make it consistent with, with the other parking. Next one, please save the birds of paradise, since that is a barrier to new home it's pretty darn close to Santa Fe Drive. There's another one for, for Mike, and I know we talked about the trees and the birds of paradise. Well, if you go back uh, to the slide on that one, um, we might be able to see Section it. What's our, you know? It's uh, the next segment, um, the east segment. Or actually, I guess it's the west segment of F. Okay. Bottom. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing it on my screen at this point. But anyway, um, we've, uh, we've tried our best to make it work without taking out any of those. It might be just some of the smaller vegetation. 
all of the areas where the vegetation is though is in the public right away. Um, so if essential for safety and other purposes, some may have to come out, but as it stands right now, we've uh, been able to keep it uh, a fair distance away from uh, the larger bird of paradise trees. All right, um, thank you. Is the speed limit changing on the street? Will the changes slow the speed of traffic? Um, I don't know if the speed limit is changing. Is as I don't know if Matt or anyone could. Has there been any discussion on the speed limit changing? No discussion so far. I know the traffic engineer has looked at it, and you know, a, a traffic or a speed survey would have to be done if we're, if there would be a change in the speed limit. But we are possibly looking at you know making lanes a little bit narrower in order to fit everything. But it will be at least ten feet wide for all of the tr the travel lanes and the turn lanes. So. That's one of the trick, the, the tactics we use. If, if you make the lanes a little bit narrower, traffic generally slows down a little bit. So, but we'd have to do a speed survey to see if the speed limit would change. But now we don't anticipate it. And the second part of that question is, will the changes slow the speed of traffic? I think Matt alluded to that. When you narrow the lanes a little bit, that'll slow the speeds. Also the roundabout tends to calm traffic and the protected intersection tends to calm traffic um, so if anything, the, the speed of traffic will likely go down a little bit. Um, the, the next comment is about looking at the extra poles for the rock signals at Lake and Santa Fe. Um, that's a good point. I don't know, um, Eric, is that something your team could look at? Or is it adding extra poles or are there extra uh, it poles? Says, I'm not 100% sure. It says there are extra poles for the rock signals at Lake and Santa Fe Drive. Um, I know we'll be looking at We'll be looking at the signal modifications. And so uh, when it comes to that, um, I, uh, the crosswalks, so um, we'll do whatever's safest. I, I believe there's only one cross. If I remember my, my if I remember correctly, there's only one crosswalk there um, at this point. So I, I don't know if it'd be best, but I, I believe uh, there's a new development going. No, not there at a different place. Um, I, I, we'll have to look at that and get back to that. That's something we'll take care of at 60%. Thank you. Yeah. And, and, and I will just add um, to whoever asked that question, if we didn't answer it uh, correctly, just ask it again in a different way because I, I didn't fully understand it. Uh, if we answered it, great. If we didn't, uh, put it in the chat box again, maybe ask it differently and, and um, we can do our best to answer it. Next question, are the crosswalks at Crest Roundabout to have rapid flashing signals for pedestrian crossings? This is something we, we talk about at the national level uh, quite a bit. I, I sit on the National Committee for Uniform Traffic Control Devices about when to put in these RFBs at rapid rectangular flashing beacons. Um, we ultimately, for the bigger roundabouts, the multi-lane, the RFBs are very helpful for the visually impaired. This is a small roundabout, a single lane with high deflection and low speeds. Uh, we're aiming for probably about a 15 mile an hour speed, uh, very low speeds. At those speeds, you can make eye contact. I mean, the, the research and the science has shown that under 20 miles an hour, a drive motorists and pedestrians actually make eye contact. And when eye contact is made, you uh, yield. So the yielding is very high on these small, low speed roundabouts. In fact, if you go down a little bit uh, Santa Fe to Rubenstein, which is just west of I-5, you'll see um, a similar size roundabout. Uh, it happens to be near where I live, so I've walked across it many times. And I think I, think I might have 100% uh, yielding. I mean, I am 6'2", I'm big, but I think I might have 100% yielding. So it's, it, we just have high yielding in these types of designs. Um, need more rider outreach on Cheryl's, uh, flex posts, no. Um, so yeah, this is something of, of a greater discussion. I appreciate your comments. I anticipate more comments on both sides of this issue. I'd, I'd love to have more dialogue on this because uh, this is something that in previous projects we've, there's been a lot of discussion on. I think some dialogue on this is, is necessary, but we can talk more about this later, but thank you for your, for, for your point. Uh, we can't. Tom, uh, Tom, on the, there's a there's that one question on top um, asking about if we're going to add sharrows to the roadway, and I think our answer on that is we're not going to add sharrows to the roadway, right? If they they want to. They can be easily added. That's that's not a problem. It's not a bad idea. But based on the speed, it's perfectly fine to do the sharrows in the roads. 
Okay. Yeah, they can they can be added. Um, I think honestly, I think people are going to ride uh, whether it's the Cheryls or not. There's another difference between 101 and Santa Fe. 101 is a very popular. I mean, I live right by 101. I actually go across it almost every morning when I go to the beach, <laughs> so I know it really well. Uh, it's very popular for for sports cyclists. I, you know, this morning I was out there and I saw lots of sports cyclists, dozens of them probably cycle by me. So it's very popular for sports cyclists. The Santa Fe just isn't as popular for sports cyclists. It's just not. I've been there a lot. There's not that many east-west um, people going out for recreational rides as compared to one-on-one lots of north-south movement. Um, so the ones that are there, if they choose to be on the road, they're welcome to be. Cheryl's can easily add it if there's a desire for that. Feel free to give us input if that's what you desire. Um, and we can, we can work with you. Um, we can't see all the questions and don't know what you're answering. Maybe go to a slide that is helpful. Um, okay. <clears throat> Thank you for that. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, we can definitely go to the slides to, to, uh, to, to, to do that. Another one, we have metal poles on Bonita. Um, all right, so I guess I'm not aware of the metal poles on Bonita. Maybe you could write into the chat box where exactly Matt, on Bonita. We, can, we can work on that. That's off the press room. Thank hey, you. Matt, can you pull up the question and answers on your screen too, maybe, so that people can oh, see the okay. question and answer, the questions that are, we're reading from? If you click on the little and just one, go ahead some input. And just one point of clarification, the metal poles on Bonita aren't to separate a bike um, facility. It's just to pursue. Uh, separate a, a parking area at a school from um, school pedestrians. Um, thank you for that. Please, no poles, difficult to maintain and ugly. I do ride a bicycle. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I think that we, we should have a broader discussion on, on types of separation. Um, there's you know, they're, they're difficult to maintain. They're also ugly, but when you have limited right-of-way, you have limited width. The ideal thing is you have a nice wide median. Um, when you have limited right-of-way minimum width, sometimes you're limited what you can do if you want to design for the safety of, of all cyclists and pedestrians. And there's a high school right there. So like so many things in life, we might be looking at a trade-off. Um, we want to protect the kids on biking to and from school. At the same time, we we don't want this to be ugly and we want uh, community support. So, so I do, I, I would appreciate a, a bigger conversation on this. And if uh, everyone gave input on this would be great, right? So if we, if we had hundreds or thousands of people um, saying this is what they wanna see and then it can be a more of a democratic process, I, I personally would, would appreciate that. Uh, we were told there'd be three minute comment segments. Yeah. Clint O'Connor is prepared to give some important comments regarding, so, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I can answer this one. So Chuck, um, I think that Chuck and then later on, I can see Clint also has the same comment too. So I, I think Lillian also commented on this, uh, that this development is still in the planning phases at the city. There's still ongoing public comment being inserted and it's nothing has been uh, set in stone. They're still in the planning phases of it and nothing has been decided yet. So the city is still working on that. And as those um, are those items are resolved and decisions are made, uh, they will be incorporated into the plans. So hopefully, um, hopefully that can- Hey, hold, I'm gonna try to stop answer. sharing my screen right now real quick. Let's see. Okay. Um, can people see the comment uh, and the question and answers now? No. Uh, it's still from our own. You have to click on the, on the um, Q and A at the bottom to bring that window up. So if someone's not seeing the questions, they may not have clicked on that bottom Q and A icon. Okay. Let, let me try to do it. Hold on one second. I'm gonna try to. <clears throat> Does that help? That's your email at this point. <clears throat> As we're waiting. Well, we just have to make sure we read the question out loud before yeah. we answer. I mean, should, so I, fill up. should I share Felipe. my screen? Oh, man. Does that help if I share my screen? I don't think it'll make any difference. 
You can't see it from my screen now? I no. think nope. it hides it. But it okay. should come up on everyone's if they click on the on the question and answer box down below. They can bring that, they can move that um, dialogue box around on their own screen. Yeah, if they click on the open one. So right now is asking about the lighting. Will lighting be installed? What kind? So um, um yeah, I'm not sure about the lighting. Mike or Eric, do you know more about the lighting? Yeah, we, we've been exploring the lighting. Um, it's been uh, discussed. Um, right now, some of the, Kathy, your, your inbox is being shown right now. Um, so is. the lighting was, was discussed. Uh, there are some plans right now to add some, uh, but we also know that um, it's we want to keep a minimalistic approach to the lighting. Um, so it's, it's one of those things where we're still looking for feedback on that. If it's, uh, if it's going to want to be added or not. Um, or that. They're real likely Wait, Mike. improved lighting at all the intersections where there's the protected intersections and the roundabout will definitely get some new lighting anywhere where there's crosswalks. You have a minimum candle power it needs to get on those streets. We would certainly like to do lighting up and down the streets, but it hasn't been determined if that can fit within the project budget as it stands. Okay, um, thank you for that. Next uh, question, how do you propose we give feedback? I will uh, defer to Bethany and Matt, our two outreach specialists. Do you two know about uh, uh, how we propose to give feedback? Yeah, uh, obviously everybody that hopefully got the letter, my contact information is in there. Um, I can, if you want, I had it on the, the last slide of the PowerPoint, which was up for most of the question and answer. It has my email and, and phone number and the website, which I gave. Once you go on to the city website and go to public notices, uh, the information is posted there. I guess the best thing, please email and call me and I'll make sure we, we try to get the, the question documented and answered. Okay, uh, thank you, Matt. Um, we'll, we'll just do that. So next, next one is more of a comment. You gain a huge amount of speed on any bike in section F. Uh, thank you for that comment. It, it seemed more like a comment than a, and then a question. Um, the next one is for Mike. It's about native plants. Mike, why don't you read this one and then answer it? Yeah, wherever we can, we will use, um, well, certainly California native plants is not a problem. San Diego native plants, it, you know, again, one of the problems on a bioswale is that it, it gets soaked and then it also gets very dry. So um, some, most of um, native plant material can't work in a bioswale situation. Uh, there are certainly some native plants that are more wetland-based plants and, and grasses that will work in that situation. I already talked about the trees. We're still trying to find if there's a tree that can be used on it. Uh, but for the most part, as I mentioned before, there's really only six native um, Western San Diego trees that will work and that, you know, a sycamore and a tory pine or a bay laurel is not going to work in those areas. Alders are uh, white alders, even though they're not um, native to uh, coastal San Diego. Uh, they are native to the foothills, the white alders. And so those are the ones that could potentially fit in there and their branch pattern is potentially high enough to be able to work next to walkways in a, in a bike facility. So we will definitely be trying our best to in any of the bulb outs that are not being used as a stormwater runoff, we'll have a lot more options on native material there. All right, uh, thank you for that, Mike. Next question, how does a protected crosswalk at SDA work with cars coming out of the SDA parking lot turning east? That's actually an excellent question. It's something I, I considered at length, uh, went out there and I sort of imagined uh, um, that protected crosswalk and the, the cars- you want me to pull up the slide? Um, Sure, yeah, pull it up just so, just so people have a, a better understanding of what we're talking about. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, there's no left turns uh, allowed coming out of those uh, driveways on, that, on the school. Uh, isn't that a right turn only? Yeah, that looks like yeah. a right turn. That's a one-way street. Right? That's the right turn right in, right out. I mean, yeah. right, right turn in only. So it's a right turn in right there. Okay, so there's no, is, is that a? Oh, wait, hold on. I'm just looking at this it. This one here, this one has, the one on the western side has, you can turn right or left. Yeah. This is the one near the track. So you can turn into the uh, left turn pocket <clears throat> at that point. So, so the western side is coming out, the eastern side is going in. All right. Um, okay, hopefully that uh, answers that question. 
um, you, you don't have anyone coming out turning left, turning east. Well, uh, you, you would, under this plan, the way it's shown right now, you would be able to do it the same way you're doing it now. <clears throat> correct. Um, if, if, uh, if we didn't answer your question, please post it in the chat box again, but hopefully that answered your question. The next question, has a gap been addressed yet with Captrans between I-5 and Gardena? So we've uh, had some discussion. Matt, have you had any contact with, with, I, with Caltrans? I know we've had discussion about uh, getting Caltrans on board to close that gap. We're, it's in the process. I've made contact. It's, we're, we're, we're working it slow. We're working it slow. OK, so the answer is Matt's made contact. He's working it slow. So um, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, so. When you say 30% design, does that mean you will be incorporating comments from the public and making modifications? That's the idea. We, 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 we are looking at incorporating comments. This is why we're so early in the process for we're asking for comments. We've, we're, we've done horizontal design, but not vertical design. Uh, so based on your comments, you could uh, affect the project. So we'd like to, we would like to hear comments from the, the general public. Um, I don't know if anyone else wants to comment on that. Um, this is Bethany. I just noticed that there's quite a few questions still about this overall schedule. I was wondering if we should just go back to the overall schedule slide. Sure. And maybe Matt could just describe that one more time in terms of where we're at and then the next steps of the process. Absolutely. Let me do that. Can everybody see the slide now? Okay, yes. Again, as we said, we started, you know, back in May, we uh, council approved the design contract. We've gotten our 30% by November, we did our, and uh, we have the, which one are we for the CEQA approval and we're getting the NEPA document for the grants. And right now we have the 30% design now, which is in, it's being submitted around the city for comments and we're going out to the public, which we are right now. Again, by the end of late April into May, the 60% by August, we can get the 90 and then finalize our design hopefully by September um, of this year of 2021 and then obviously we're going to try get um, ability to get the construction funding and try go to the project construction so that is the basic timeline and matt just a clarification there was another comment regarding the construction phasing is it anticipated all of this would be constructed at the same time the ideal and the goal is to do it all at once if you know, obviously funding has to be there. If it is, we are open and we can look at doing phases of it, but our, our desire would be to build it all at once, but we just have to see. Uh, thank you for that. So that, does that, Bethany, is that enough discussion on the timeline? Yes, thank you. I think that resolves the timeline question. Okay. So how wide will the travel lanes be? Will the work include reconstruction or overlay of the existing roadway too? The travel lanes will be at least 10 feet wide. Uh, and Eric, I'm gonna throw this at you. Will the work include reconstruction or overlay of the existing roadway? Uh, no, we discussed that and worked out with the city uh, uh, at their existing um, overlay plans. And uh, right now the roadway pavement section is pretty well, is pretty, is in good condition. Uh, so it doesn't need to be overlaid at this time. So we're going to limit uh, the work, roadway work into the areas of where we're putting uh, bike lane improvements and water quality improvements and limit any type of additional overlay to help save project costs to kind of focus more so on the protected intersections and items like that. So um, those are some of the things that we, we kind of looked at. We coordinated that with the city uh, already. So. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, so the next question is the current traffic signals are not sens sensitive to bikes and or the trigger loops are not visible. Will the new design have markings for placing your bike in the right place to trigger the signal? The, sig the symbol is in the MUTCD. Um, the answer is yes, definitely. Um, it's an uh, interesting question. I actually, I sit on the bicycle technical committee of the NCUTCD and we came up with a sec second symbol for the MUTCD, which we had proved that was rejected by FHWA. So um, we'll, if, it, if, it, if it ends up the two symbols are in there, we'll definitely put one of them for all the, uh, the bike loops. 
Um, do you know the date of construction of the signal of Belour and Santa Fe Drive overdue? It makes very little sense not to do them along with this project. So I think we're working with the city on that and we'll coordinate, correct, Matt? Yes, we will. Yeah, we'll, so we'll be coordinating that when we go out. Oh, okay. Well, I guess they're coordinating. That's good news. Um, based on increased safety in the corridor, when is the best case timeline to start construction, Eric? Um, as soon as possible, I think, <laughs> as soon as we get the construction funds. <laughs> when we go through the process, obviously we have to get through the design, we have to get the appropriate permitting and the funding yeah. and, and we go out and we can advertise and we have to get a contractor on board and, and we can get it going. Yeah, I don't think there's much issue with uh, too much of the corridor. It's not like it's a, a major flood control. And I think maybe that might be the issue. Somebody's concerned about maybe flooding from rainfall and things like that and storm drains and stuff so, um, in this area. So it's, it's not like a major flood control project where, where you end up having the, the reduction in flood control. So this is more of a, just a phasing issue with traffic and signals and things like that. So, but we, we were taking phasing into consideration as far as construction phasing and stuff like that as we do the design. Okay, thank you, Eric. Um, what is the blue line in the right-of-way? Yes, the blue line is the right-of-way, so good question. Next, I own a 1280 Santa Fe Drive at the southeast corner of Press. Why well, would a turn left in my driveway after construction? It appears I would have to drive the wrong way into a turn lane. So the answer is, we will design this. So if you live on Crest, whether it's the north side or the south side, you'll be able to drive into every uh, driveway. That's, that was my, when I did up the 30% designs, that was my proposal, which means instead of having like a six inch high splitter island, we can do something that's mountable that you can just drive over and you can uh, enter your driveway. Where, where the ideal is we're not, we're not reducing access for, um, for, for driveways. That's, that's the idea behind that. Hey, Tom, Tom, one correction on that though. You know, the 1280 he's talking about is on Santa Fe Drive. Oh, it's is it? From the roundabout. So oh. right now, um, you know, the property that's closest to Crest Drive on the northeast, uh, northwest corner uh, would have to use the roundabout to turn left into the driveway. But this next one over, it, it, it can turn from the uh, center left turn pocket. <clears throat> it's, that, it's that one that you see above Kelly Drive. That's what 1280 shows on the map. Now, uh -huh. the next, yeah, the next one over though. Oh, okay. So is, do they have a, maybe they don't have a driveway right down there. <clears throat> no, yeah, Kelly Drive, there's Kelly Drive, and then it's the corner one here, I think. So, me, um, if, if they don't have a driveway and they need to turn left into the driveway that's close to the roundabout, they just use the roundabout to change their direction. So it's very close in terms of where they would need to, to turn, use the roundabout to make that work. I think the yeah, individual they, is the one. Do you see those two cars parked just yeah. directly south of the roundabout? I think that's the the driveway that's in question. Is how that individual would be getting into his driveway. Um, you see the black and the white car? Yeah, yeah, no, I just south that. of the roundabout. Yeah. Right there. Yep, that's the driveway I think in question. But I believe they also have an access way that comes off of Kelly Drive, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> well, we can work something out. There's right a way to work something out there. So you know, we can get some good comment. We'll make sure we look into that one. But, but I will tell you that when I typed in 1280, it's on the north side and it's the, the one that we were looking at before. <clears throat> yeah, it does look like it's on the north side right there. Um, and and the, the question is about turning left. Um, the uh, so I think Mike's right. I think what will happen for that situation is you'll go around the roundabout and you turn right instead of turning left, which is uh, not, it, it, it seems like a relatively easy maneuver, but we can have further conversations about that. Um, just basically use the roundabout to make a U-turn. Yeah. Right? But yeah, it's not know. a U-turn because you just keep going around the circle nice and smooth. So yeah. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a dangerous U-turn right. because it's nice and smooth and yeah. Right. Uh, thank you for that. Um, why are you adding additional parking along Santa Fe in section BW? Um, so we did have requests for more parking. Um, we're very open to listening to anyone and everyone with comments. Um, if you want to remove certain parking, please let us know. If you want more parking, please let us know. Um, the, the idea is we, you know, get as many comments as possible and we, you know, 
listen, you know, listen to the people as much as possible. Um, so uh, let us know your thoughts. Highway 101 in Cardiff should include a lane reduction to reestablish the bike lane as well as a separate facility. Lots of pet activity is a consideration to be addressed. Um, that well, sounds like more like a comment. A Thank you. Issue, so. Thank you for that. In section D, what are the impacts of the northeast corner of Aloha and Santa Fe and existing driveway and property retaining wall? Homeowner question. All right, so let's go to section D. Aloha Drive. Oh, uh, that area there. Yes. That one actually does have a steep driveway and we still have to look at further at that, but we're gonna to try to minimize any type of impacts to that area there. Um, so we still have to look at it further, but we, we do want, I assume you're, you're talking about the, 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 the east driveway to the, the east property to the east of Aloha Drive on there. Um, and that, that has like a little chain wall and a steep driveway there. So um, with the, uh, and in this area, I believe the roadway is a little bit flatter in this area. So we have some flexibility to play with the grades, uh, but uh, we're gonna be working with the, with the grades there to kind of help smooth out that, that differential uh, for that, so. All right, thank you, Eric. Uh, next question, uh, we appreciate the trees along SDA frontage. I don't see the westbound bus stop on the slide. I assume that is remaining. As far as I know, we're uh, keeping all, all the bus stops um, uh, it's correct. Been, it's been relocated to the east further than the current location. This is the safest spot to put it, especially with the um, mid-block crossing or the pedestrian crossing. So it has been uh, moved down to the east from its current location, but it is still there uh, in close proximity to the existing one. So uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, next question, how does this project improve the handling of existing and additional traffic? How does it discourage cut through traffic via surrounding streets? So uh, we're not reducing capacity um, in any way, shape or form. Um, and indeed we're, we're the roundabout, it tends to handle capacity quite well. Um, how does it discourage cut through traffic via surrounding streets? So we're not looking at increasing congestion, which would uh, tend to increase cut through traffic. Um, so at this time, we're, we're not, you know, we, as part of our project, we haven't done anything on side streets. I, I know that I believe Matt and Eric had, had alerted to, you know, those are future conversations. Um, correct? Is that, is that right, guys? If anything we, 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 that may or may not happen would happen as part of a different project, but it doesn't look like we're encouraging any cut through traffic. No, no, we're not. No, we're not increasing the the number of lanes or anything like that. We're keeping the lane configurations the same, and and so and we're keeping the you know pretty much the same traffic flow and patterns. So that's not being affected. So we're just adding safety improvements uh, and additional pedestrian safety pedestrian safety improvements. So it, it's not changing much in that aspect of things. So. Okay, thank you for that. Um, uh, next one, there are more poles than needed to push the button to cross. They could have put one pole for two directions instead of a pole uh, for the crosswalk crossing at Lake and a pole for crossing Santa Fe Drive. Um, I, I, I will say, since that's something I've uh, done professionally in the past, you usually go out with a manual and you measure the distance and, you, and the manual will actually tell you how many poles you need. There's requirements on how many poles. Um, but I, I haven't specifically gone and made these measurements at Lake, so we appreciate your, your comments. Well, um, Tom, Tom, that's more of an ADA requirement too, right, for the actuators? That's exactly, it's an ADA requirement, how far from the ADA ramp they have to be, how high off the ground they have to be, how far apart they have to be, when you can do one, when you can do two. It's all required by law, um, but, uh, but we appreciate your comment. I mean, it's, it's possible that there's too many poles and that we could get away with less, but that's something we'd have to, look into. Um, so I don't know if, if, if someone's able to look into that. But anyway, can we keep streetlights to a minimum for homeowners along Santa Fe? Um, anyone want to comment on streetlights? Well, just that the budget yeah. restrict it in the first place, but we'll meet all safety standards. Um, sure. Yeah, in general, I can say um, near the western portion near the school, obviously, and by the, the crossing for the bus stop, yes. Um, at the, at the protected intersections, obviously, for, for the safety requirements, we'd have to put lighting. As we get further east at the roundabout, we 
want a few, obviously, for re the requirements, but in other areas, you know, I, I understand people don't want to have street lights blasting into their, their windows at night. And um, yeah, obviously, we'll definitely keep that into consideration. And especially on the very eastern portion from Crest down to El Camino, I know it, it, it kind of, uh, the residents seem to like not having a lot of street lights there. We can look at that. And thank you for that comment. And I believe, Matt, we're looking at directional too. Some yeah, we're, we're playing obviously ones that focus mainly straight down from the pole. We're not looking at a 360 degree globe that, that goes out in every direction. Okay, um, thank you for that. Uh, next one, commuting bike riders may want to ride on the road versus separated facilities. So there are people like me that use this east-west corridor much. Absolutely, yeah, that's definitely consideration. We, uh, uh, we're going to assume there's a lot of um, commuters that want to use want to bike on the road. Um, so please keep the comments coming in terms of if you want to show or not or how, how you want that to look. <laughs> please keep the plans you have and keep the bicyclists out of the road. All right, again, but watching one bike rider take up entire lane is the crux of the problems. I understand the group riding on 101, but to have one bicycle in the middle of the traffic lane is not desirable. Um, thank you for your comment. Uh, back to back to uh, opposing comments. So uh, yeah, we'd like to have as many comments from the public as possible so we can make an informed decision about uh, what the people want. Um, there are good points on, on, on all sides of this uh, discussion. So we, we want to please, please, please keep your comments coming. From El Camino to Crest, the north side uh, shared green lane have biker symbols and walker symbols painted in white in the green lane. Yeah, it's, not gonna be, it's not going to be a shared, right? Correct? It's just going to be a bike lane. Well, well, the, we're allowing people to walk on the north side, so I think we might as well make it shared. Um, and it's going to be so slow, it's going to be going up a steep hill. Yeah, that's, that's think, why we discussed it that way. I think it's fine making put little bicycle stencils in that and having it shared. So yeah, that's a great comment to, to just have it shared. Um, uh, let's see, I have to scroll down to the next one. Uh, Native live oaks. I think that's a mic question. Yeah, I mean, there are some oaks um, that might. Make, and go ahead. Make sure you read the make sure you read the whole question because remember, people can't see them. So yeah, Mike, can you read it? Um, I'm not seeing it on screen. You just read it, right? Oh, Native oaks. Oh, the only way to be. Yes, yeah, native so live oaks could work as trees. However, uh, unless you put them in as a very large tree, the branch patterns need to be six foot clear. Uh, next to a bike lane or next to a sidewalk area, actually seven foot is the better standard. Um, so, but we will look at some more vertical. They're not necessarily native to San Diego, Western San Diego County, but there are some other oak trees that will work in this situation that are definitely California natives. Uh, sea nellis are lovely low shrubs. Yeah, we can certainly use some of these in those areas um, and things like the spiny rush is something that's good in a uh, bioretention soil. So we will try our best to work those in. <clears throat> All right. Uh, thank you for that. Next one. Is it possible to have traffic lights, the two driveways to the high school that function only during the start and end of school? This may help with safety and traffic flow. Other major cities have uh, traffic cops to whistle through traffic for safety at school. Um, we, uh, it, it's, um, it, it depends on the volumes and the flows. Uh, you know, this, this is not uh, something I think we would, we would study and come to a conclusion on what, what makes the most sense. I think that's a, a fair statement. Um, no access from Kelly Drive. Uh, do you want to, Matt, bring that up on the map? Is that a question or a statement, I guess? <clears throat> uh, I, I couldn't really tell if that's a question or a statement. It just says no access from Kelly Drive. That's the one between, that's right west of Crest, the roundabout. Is this possibly the, the property owner at 12? Yeah, or yeah I think that's a property owner who's, who's uh, he said. Yeah, we can, have... yeah. And we can, I think that's something where we got to maybe mention that we can add access because there's that right away. We can add a little driveway extension to his property through that area. It's something that we'll have to look at. Mm -hmm. work out to see how we can solve those those problems with them so so next one jim Wong, we need to 
encourage traffic light camera detection where possible, much better option than bike loop indicator decal and or tires that wire trigger feature progress. Um, yeah, there's been mixed results. Uh, a lot of traffic engineers will tell you that um, bike loop detectors are, are tried and true and the um, other types of detection uh, um, have mixed results. But yeah, it's something we can definitely look at and, and, and consider. Um, at driveway locations where vehicles cross the sidewalk, besides the grade separation, will there be any treatment on the sidewalk to alert pedestrians of the conflict zone? Um, there, yeah, it's something we can, we can look at. Um, the whole idea of raising them. So if you want to look at a really good example, there's a site, uh, Western Ave in Cambridge, Massachusetts has this exact situation. We have raised crossings at all the driveways and the minor roads. Um, they don't have uh, treatments on the sidewalk to uh, alert pedestrians, but the whole fact that they're raised um, slows the speeds down so much to mitigate any traffic. Uh, that's that's whole, our whole idea is, is mitigate any traffic. So I, I think we'll probably emulate what we consider is, is best as is, is best practice. Um, but also point out, even though the, the cycle tracks or the protected bike lanes are shown all in that green, you'll see a brighter green at the driveways. So that's uh, basically paint that would be used as a mixing zone to let drivers know that they're crossing what basically is a bike facility. So, um, but the rest of the lanes uh, are not likely to be painted. They don't really need to be, but at each crossing point where a vehicle crosses it, it's a good idea to have uh, the green uh, paint that's used and sometimes in a dash pattern to indicate that, that they're crossing a path and that they need to share that space with anyone that might be coming. Thank you for that, Mike. So yeah, so the answer then is uh, yes, there is that, uh, it will be called out. So next question, um, where is the SDA bus stop for westbound buses on Santa Fe? The only one I see is for eastbound buses. So I think, Mike, you mentioned that one of them is going to be moved and they're both there, correct? Um, I think on our 30 set, uh, our 30 percent drawings, it does show up. But I think on this graphic, it did not, but it, it is going to be in there. Not yeah, it, it, it didn't. Um, yeah, on the 30 on the 30 percent that the bus stop is shown on the eastbound and westbound side, both. <clears throat> Right. Um, uh, okay, so it's, it's on the engineering drawing. It just didn't make it quite to this. Right. Next question. There are no ADA uh, ramps at crosswalks at Lake and Santa Fe Drive. Uh, so obviously, we're going to be putting ADA ramps. Uh, they're required. In this drawing, because it's just a graphical representation, I think we just left off the ADA ramps. But they are on, on the engineering drawings. Um, from El Camino to Crest with the north side. Oh, wait. We ready, uh, did we read this? El Camino Crest of the north side shared green lane have biker symbols, walker symbols. Yes, we will have both symbols. Can we get the NCTD to improve bus stops on this corridor and others around town? Yes, it costs money, but it's needed in equity consideration too. Um, so maybe that's one for Matt. Are you in, in contact with NCTD? Uh, we do have, you know, a, a committee where we talk with NCTD and it's always a discussion. So, you know, thank you. We'll take that and, and we'll, we'll put it in. So, and obviously once we get this done, we will, we are, we will be sharing our plans with NCTD because it's involving a bus stop. So they will be involved in this one as well. I would also note that the bus stops by the high school, the two bus stops there, those are actually on a platform that comes out more in the street, the gray area that you're seeing on screen. Um, that's still plenty enough room for the bus to pull out of the lane. And it makes it a lot easier for them to pull back in the lane if they're not trying to get to the curb. So um, that will be a race platform. That's an opportunity for that bus stop to be improved with uh, even a better shade shelter. Um, so that, that one may make some sense, but that would be an NCTD um, uh, solution or they would be the ones making the decision on that. <clears throat> Perfect. I just wanted to bust in here before we go to the next uh, few questions. We only have a few left. Um, so just a reminder, if anyone has any um, outstanding questions or comments, please take this time to type them into the chat box. We uh, would love to get your input and your feedback. Thank you. Great, thanks. So the next one is uh, Encinitas Bike Walk Advocacy Group meets last Tuesday of each month. Contact me if you're interested in joining. 
Christian Schindler7 at gmail.com, 5.30 p.m. start time on Zoom these days. All are welcome. Um, thank you for that. Um, do we have, so I see two open. What happens when new developments, um, traffic is backed up? Will this not force traffic onto side streets? I think we talked about that. Um, what, what, the did we... city's probably looking at the traffic. The traffic engineer is looking at the traffic counts and the traffic management of that. And so mm -hmm. whatever improvements or additions that the city has for that, we can incorporate into plans. Um, so, mm -hmm. And the other one is the one about the, the California native plants, which uh, Mike answered regarding that. So. Okay. Uh, the other one they added was bus stop improvements needed, seating, shelter, shade, recycling, landfill, receptacles. Thanks. Please push them in an encouraging and effective way. Um, Christine, we will. Um, I, I believe we, we will have to coordinate with them, of course, because we are moving some of them. Um, so we, we plan on adding, a, 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 you know, as we get to the 60%, talking with them to give them future time to discuss any items with them. There's also um, Eric, any stops. I was just going to add, Eric, that there is an additional requirement when you have a basically a cycle track that would be between the bus and the sidewalk. We have to handle that differently. We have to right. either raise that or make sure that the yielding requirements are clear between those people going onto the, like the one we were showing on screen. If the platform's out there, when they cross that, usually you would make the bikes yield to the pedestrians in that situation, but you have to have both the mixing paint zone as well as the um, uh, probably yield signs or shark's teeth that are um, on the ground that indicate who's supposed to be yielding to who. So in all our cases, we'll have to look that closer, but again, the one by the high school is, is a really good opportunity for us to get a really improved set of bus stops in that area if NCPD uh, agrees with that. <clears throat> Looks like another question came in. Things look great. I e-bike Santa Fe Drive every day. Speeds can be high for bikers going west. So I'd like a little extra space for sight lines for vehicles pulling into SDA that are heading west. Um, it's a good comment. More, more sight lines, please, um, at that location. Okay, well, uh, thank you everybody for joining us virtually. I know it really isn't the same when we, we can't have the interaction face to face. And I certainly hope we, we answered as many questions as we could and tried to present uh, the project we have so far and explain the corridor vision to you. And again, please feel free to reach out to the city. My contact information here is still on the slide and we'll make sure we get this captured. And as we move forward and get this design finalized, we wanna make sure we capture and get what works well for the community and what obviously has worked well for safety and, and uh, is gonna work for everybody along the corridor. So thank you again for everybody attending. And there um, any other last words anybody would like to add? Good job guys. All right, thank you very thank much you. for joining and we appreciate it. Thank you everybody. Thank you.